So now it is time to build our first simple workflow. To follow my workshop, you can download my workflow on OpenArt. You see here there's a download button and above that you have a green button that says launch workflow where you can actually run my workflow in the cloud for free. When you click on that button, it takes a little while and then it's opening up this window. As you can see here, everything I've built for you is in here. You don't have to download or install anything. This is completely prepared for you. So I always start with the K sampler because it's kind of the heart of the whole AI workflow. So double click on the canvas type K and the K sampler pops up. Now, as we already know, we have four different inputs here. First, we need a model that we want to use to render the AI image. So click, drag out the cable, let go, and then it suggests to you here the checkpoint load simple. The checkpoint is the AI model you use to render the image. So click on that. You have this here. It's already connected, as you can see. And here you have the checkpoint name. So you can go here and type in the search what kind of checkpoint you want to use. I'm using Dream Shaper 8. Now we also need a positive and a negative prompt. Again, for that we drag out and here you can see clip text encode. Now encode means that it needs to become from a text into the format that the AI can use. So it needs to be encoded. So we want to click on that. And again, this is already connected. We are doing the same thing for our negative prompt. Again, a clip text encode. So now we have here two text fields. Now for this to work, we need to have a clip input. The clip input is coming from the model. So we connect this down here to our positive prompt, down here to our negative prompt. Let's move these notes a little bit around so we have a better view of what they're doing. And I always position it so the positive prompt is on the top the negative prompt is on the bottom, but you again can also right click here if you want to change the title to actually write that in here. Now for this to work, we need three more things. One is the latent image. So again, we click here, drag this out up here, and we want to select in this case, the empty latent image. Click on that, it's connected. You have here the resolution size. I'm using a 1.5 model. So in this case, I'm setting it to 512 and in the height to 768. And we want to have batch size one. So it's rendering one image for us. Now we also need an output here. The output is a latent. This means it's a latent image, which are the latent data points of the AI, not the pixel image. So that means we need to convert that into actual pixels. And that is called decoding. So what we need is a VAE decode. So again, we click drag out and select here the VAE decode. Now here you can see we have another input. It's called VAE. And you can see over here, we also have a VAE. Now there is two different things you can do here. Either you use the VAE that is already part of the model, or you want to use a separate VAE. If you want to use the VAE from the model, simply click here and connect these two like this. You can also click here and drag this out so it's not connected anymore. Now instead, what we can do here is to click and drag this out and then it is suggesting for us that we have here a VAE loader. So if you want to have a separate VAE, you can do that. And here I can choose it from the menu, for example, the 84,000 VAE. Now with all of this connected, it's basically generating an image for us, but we still need to see it or save it. So again, here for the image, we have an output and we can drag it out. And here it suggests to us either save image or preview image. Now make sure to understand that preview image will only show the image, but not save it on your drive. So if you want to save the image, you want to select this one here. Then for this preview window, you can always go to one corner and drag it out in the size so you get a bigger preview. Now that all of our workflow is built, we write here a positive prompt. In my case, I'm writing mountain landscape digital painting masterpiece. And in the negative prompt, I'm writing ugly and deformed. For the case sampler, you can look at the settings you want to use. Let's say, for example, we want to use here 25 steps. 
and I also want to use the CFG scale of 7. I want to use a case sampler of DPM++2M plus plus and I'm going to use the schedule for Keras. And the denoise in this case is staying at 1 because I want to create a completely new image based on our empty latent over here. Now to start the render process, over here in this window, you can see we have a Q prompt button. Click on that, you will see the green boxes telling you what is happening in the process and then you get the image down here. If you want to have another image, you just click on the button again and it is doing the steps again that are necessary. Now here is another thing you can do. You see here on the right side it says extra options. When you click on this, it will open up an extra menu where you, for example, can have a batch count. So I can say, for example, I want to have three images rendered. Now, when I click on Q, this is then going three times to the process. But keep in mind that this is only ever showing you one image in here, not all three of them. You also have another option in here that is saying auto queue. What this does is if you activate it and then click on the queue prompt, this is rendering image after image until you click the queue prompt button again. Another functionality you have here is the view queue. You want to click on that and this shows you what is running and what is pending. So when you click here on queue prompt, you can see that this process is going on right now. And with cancel, you can always stop the process if you don't like it. For example, if you render an image and then upscale it, you want to stop the process before the upscaling if you don't like the image. Now that we have finished our workflow, I want to show you something really cool you can do here. So I've rearranged it a little bit. We have our safe image, the K sampler, the VAE decoder and the positive prompt down here. So with shift, I can select all of them together. And now with control copy, I copy them. And with control shift and V, I can paste them in here and everything is still connected. Now, if I hold shift again and click, I can drag all of them together. So now I have a second process that is using a different input in here. And of course, if I want to, I can even do that a third time to put everything over here. So now let's scroll down here a little bit closer and we're going to say here I want to have this at night and then I want to have the other one at sunset. So with that in mind, I have now created a workflow that can create three different images at every single clip based on three different prompts. So when I click here on Q prompt, you can see it starts through the rendering. The first one is the normal landscape. The second one is rendering the landscape at night. And then the third one is creating a sunset view for me. And you can imagine how much complexity and fun you can have with this. You can build all kinds of different things here. Now I want to show you another trick of what you can do here. Now here I also want to show you another way on how you can do that where you get the exact same scene but with different light situations that can be very creative. This is using control net. It's a little bit more complex but don't worry it's pretty easy and later in the workshop we are also going to look into how to use control net more in depth and what it actually does. So here when we look at the build it is the same as we have seen before but the difference now is that we are going to render the output here of the first image. You can see up here we have the mountain landscape and we are going to send this down here into ControlNet preprocessor. Now the ControlNet preprocessor you can see here you can choose from a long list of different kinds of pre-processing. So you need to figure out what is best for your situation. In this case, I want to use a depth map. So this is creating the different distances basically from the viewer by different gradients between white and black, the different gray values. You can see here in the preview image, we have our landscape. Now this can be then sent here to apply control net and we're going to use here a depth control net, of course, because we have a depth pre-processed image. Now we're going to use that image for both of our control nets. Of course, both of them are set to depth. And now what this enables me to do is I have this, as you can see here, in between my prompt 
and my k sampler. So the output of my prompt is going into apply control net and then into our k sampler, meaning that this image is becoming part of our prompt, not of the image input. So where do we get the image from in that case? Well, we do send from the k sampler here the latent output into the latent input of the second and the third k sampler. Now in this case, you see that I have my denoise on one, which means it's basically not really used, but still the latent noise is prepared with the image of the landscape already. So it still has a bit of an influence on that. And when we render that, this gives us something that looks very similar. You see here from the landscape, from the river here, even from the trees you have in here, lots of the details are very similar, but we have a different light situation. So let's click here on Q prompt just to see another variation of that. And you will see here rendering through the first image, it's giving us here the new landscape. Now it's rendering already the second landscape. Of course, this is using the depth map and you can see we have the same details or at least very similar details in here. And here we have the third version of that. Now this is for a landscape, but there's also another thing you can do with this that maybe makes a little bit more sense. So here is the second example I want to show you. In this case, I've changed my prompt to beautiful woman wearing jeans and a white shirt, standing in a park and digital painting, masterpiece, highly detailed. Now in the second prompt, I'm changing this. Everything else is the same, but I'm changing this to Asian woman. And in the last prompt, I'm changing this to beautiful black African woman. Now, of course, we are again rendering our image and then creating the depth map. You can already see here the depth map being created with the body and everything in here. And now here you can see the result that has been generated for that. So you can see we have very similar clothing. We have a very similar situation in here. But in the first image, we have a Caucasian woman. In the middle, we have an Asian woman. And on the right side, we have a black African woman. So this can have huge implications in all kinds of different fields. For example, let's say you make marketing and you want to send out your newsletter for the different ethnicities you want to address with your newsletter. Well, here you can render the same image in different variations and then include it in different versions of the newsletter. So this can be very useful. And because we're using depth map control net here, the image stays mostly the same. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.